there's no more perfect place to do Ariadne F. Noxos than Gleinborn, because uh, what you have, what Strauss and his brilliant librettist Hoffmann style tell us, is that it all takes place in a manor house where the very cultured landowner is producing and presenting uh, theater. And of course, that's exactly what we have here at Gleinborn. It, it puts you right into the action. There's a really insider view, which is quite delightful. And what we see in the prologue is Strauss's world. He's showing us his backstage world. The prologue is written as a brilliant comedy. I mean, it really works well. Uh, the, all the jokes, the timing, um, the whole uh, choice of words of Hoffmann's style is so deep, so meaningful and incredibly witty. So I think it's just the perfect comedy and very, very strong. And all the characters we meet in the prologue are very realistic and very believable. And I have met loads of singers who behave like uh, our prima donna or the tenor. In first part in prologue, I'm playing uh, like a, people think sopranos are um, selfish, full of themselves, like a prima donna, like, don't you know who I am? It's really a story about the clash between high art and low art. The high art is embodied by a couple of opera singers and a composer and a music master that are at this rich man's home to perform a very serious piece. At the same house, the same night, there is a troupe of Commedia dell'arte players, and these are comedians. I mean, they're, they're literally slapstick comedians. <laughs> composer um, is deeply, deeply offended that this great work that he's writing, Ariadne, is going to be sullied by uh, association with a troupe of uh, Comedia dell'arte, these, these um, fol de rolls, uh, these cheap performers that have come in to ruin this great work that he is in the process of creating. The composer is, is, um, is a young guy who has a deep need, almost to the point of desperation, to share what is so deeply inside of him. Um, composer is, is struggling to do serious music, and the one who pays it wants to have a comedy instead, or this in the same time, comedy and tragedy, which is life, actually. <laughs> He's trying to hold on to the essence of what he's written um, in the face of all of these outside forces which are telling him, um, we, we might need to change this, or oh, it's a little bit boring. You know, we've got the fireworks happening at 9 p.m., we, we want to have a happy crowd, we need more humor. The problem becomes that um, things are running late as they are wont to do and the very snooty major domo announces to them that they will have to perform their two totally disparate plays simultaneously, together. And uh, the composer, the young composer, who's this very idealistic young man, and this is his first big break, he is absolutely shattered. It's all, almost like a moment of waking up. And I had the impression that in this piece we have a big moment of waking up for the composer. Mm -hmm. 